What's up guys, it is Amy from Shantman Phones bringing you a video. I know I look horrible. Um, it's 10.49, I, got, I just got home from work recently. Uh, my hair's been in the hat all day. I really don't care. I'm using my front facing camera. You know, a lot of things not going for me here. Ah, man, we're gonna talk about really makes you break out, but the video. This is How to Buy a Car at 16 Part 1. And this is gonna be how to get money. And you got a couple options. Start a, start your own business. Businesses include lawn mowing, car washing, uh, you can build computers for people, mod controllers, whatever. Whatever you're good at, you can do it. If you're good good with cars, like mechanic wise, you know, maybe your friends need their ball joints replaced or something and you can do it for them. Um, and charge them like 20 bucks an hour or something and it takes you half an hour so you get 10 bucks or whatever like a minimum of 20 you know you know what I mean um you can get a job um go around to all the fast food restaurants depending on your local laws I believe everywhere you can work by 16 some places like I know back in South Carolina of course I'm in Florida now back in South Carolina you can work at uh 14 just depends on the place where you're getting hired if they want to hire you at 14 um you're just going to have to put in a lot of ap applications because you're going to get rejected. You're going to get turned down. Some people are going to be like, hey, I'm not hiring minors right now. It ha It's happened to me. They're like, you walk in, they're like, oh, you seem nice, blah, blah, blah. How old are you? You're like 16. Oh, sorry. Come back when you're 18. I'm not hiring minors right now. And it's going to happen. And what a lot of places are doing, you can go by and see if they're doing it. I know they're doing it here in Florida, is they're having open interviewing. So one day of the week, say like on Mondays at 2.30 to 5, you just walk in and say, hey, I'm here for an open interview. And basically you skip a step um, in the entire process. And that's what I actually did to get my job at Taco Bell. I put in a, an application online. They're doing a lot of online applications at like... Uh, uh, fast food places now and then I went in and did the open interview as well she just pulled up my um, pulled up my application um, right there and she hired me on the spot and here in Florida minimum wage is eight dollars and five cents an hour uh, in a lot of places I know it's 725 like it was back in South Carolina so you have to think, um, do you want to make payments on the car? If so, if you're 16, you have to co-sign on a loan. You can't get a loan by yourself. Your parents have to co-sign for you, which basically says, um, if I don't pay the loan this month, my parents are responsible, which you're probably going to have to prove to them that you are responsible. Um, another thing you have to think about is paying for insurance. If you are paying for your own insurance, um, Like in California right now, the minimum wage is ten dollars, which so I mean, if you can um, get ten dollars an hour, and you don't have to work a minimum wage job, right? Like there are a lot of jobs here. Like uh, you could get a job at a water park, um, you could get a, uh, a a paid internship. I know a lot of places here in Ponte Vedra, um, there's like an unspoken agreement that like the minimum wage is like ten dollars, even though in Florida it's eight oh five. I get paid eight oh five because I work down at Jack's Beach. But, like, I've been talking to a lot of people that go to my school, and, like, this one kid works at a water park, and he gets, like, ten fifty an hour. Uh, you can work at a mechanic shop, you know. Those are pretty easy to um, get wage, uh, raises at, and mechanics usually are pretty well paid, even if you're just a helper, you know what I mean? Um, I know in New York, uh, hold on, I believe New York right now is $9 an hour, I believe, and a lot of these places are... Um, going up to fifteen dollars an hour and so you basically have to calculate uh, what car you want to get and so part two of this is going to be researching the perfect car uh, a couple factors what car you want to get what do you want to do with it do you want to modify it, keep it stock do you plan on doing the servicing yourself because if you're not going to service it yourself you know there's a lot more than just the initial investment you got to think about oil changes transmission fluid changes train changing out the um, ball joints, this, that, and the other, maintenance, and that's going to cost a ton if you're not going to do it yourself. So you have to factor in, say if you make $2,000 a month, because uh, uh, say you're working 40, say you live in New York and it, it turns to $15 an hour and you're working 40 hours a week, 
uh, at $15 an hour, that's $2,400 minus taxes. Um, and the only thing, if you're 16, the only thing you're worrying about is a car payment. You could have a really freaking nice car. Um, but your insurance is going to be really high. And if your insurance is going to, like, your parents would probably pay for insurance for, like, a Honda Civic. But if you're driving a Nissan GTR, uh, probably not. Another thing, um, like, if you are making payments, you're probably going to want it paid off pretty quick. Like, I know, like, if I buy a car, like, I'm looking at 350Zs right now, and I know I can't do that all in one down payment, but I want it paid off within a year. I don't want to make a long three-year plan or anything, anything crazy like that, because then I'm going to end up paying way too much. And if I do it uh, like this, I can have, and my payments are going to be higher, but it's going to be done quicker. Or, um, since I'm going to Spain next year, I might do lower payments and then save up a bit, and then while I'm in Spain, I'll still be able to pay it off, which will give me more money to modify it right now, because I'm not keeping mine in stock. So, um, like I said, you, there's a couple factors you got to think, uh, factor into it, insurance, um, and whatnot, how much the car is going to cost you if you got a $2,000 car and fix it up, and you, uh, paid for it in full. Um, you do not have to get full coverage insurance. If you want to, you can. But if it's a $2,000 car, and there's tons of them, maybe if you got a really good deal and that car is worth $6,000 and it just needed to be fixed up and you fix it up, you might want full coverage, which will replace your car. But if you just get, um, I believe it's called liability, when you own the car, you actually own it, it's not like, um, financed, uh, your insurance prices are going to be cheaper because you don't have to pay for full coverage. Um, so you got to factor in, do you want to pay for full coverage? How much are your payments going to be? How much will it take you? If you just want to buy it straight up, how much time will it take you to save up that money? Uh, and then think about maintenance. So basically, um, get a job, obviously. I mean, it's really not that hard. You're just going to have to go from place to place. You might get rejected and whatnot. Um, and it's whatever. You go to different types of places. Don't just go to fast food. Go to Publix. Go try and get a job as a waiter or a waitress. Because if you're getting a job as a waiter or a waitress, you get paid waiter's pay, which I know here in Florida is like five twenty two an hour, which seems like you're not getting much. But when you're getting good tips, um, if you get a, if you can work during a busy time, or even have two jobs, uh, tips are awesome. Uh, if you're a good employee, if you're not willing to put in a lot of work, I wouldn't really get a job as a waiter because you're not going to get, or a waitress, because you're not going to get many tips, or good tips. Um, but starting your own business is the highest risk, highest reward. You're going to have to put initial money into it. You're going to have to find who's going to, um, who you're going to give your service to. Um, figure out, there's a lot more figuring out, and it's not as uh, set in stone. Like, if I go and get a job, I know I can get hours. And if I start a lawn mowing business, I don't know if I can get yards. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to charge for yards, how much people are willing to pay. But if I find that stuff, it's going to be higher reward, but higher risk as well. So you just, these are a couple ideas, you know, babysitting is another good idea or whatever. Um, these are just a few things that you can do to be able to buy a car at 16. This is part one. Stay tuned for part two, which will be researching the perfect car. This has been Zane from Shortman Films. I'll see you guys later.